Welcome to the Dimensioning uh, AutoCAD guide for um, the tutorial suite that we've been working on. Um, dimensions in AutoCAD are important to understand. Uh, if you're going to make any sort of professional drawing, then um, you'll need to at least understand the basics. Um, the first one, the first command that uh, we go through in this panel at least is um, dim lin, dim linear, that is to say. So it, it measures along the X or the Y axis only. Um, once again, I'll turn hints off at the start. Remember to turn it off at the start this time. Um, so just to get a feel, we can click between these two points. And you can see that I'm only putting in a dimension, which is either measuring vertically or measuring horizontally. Um, so we might say, you know, we want to know the position of these two points. We do something like that. We could show both pieces of information. Um, you'll notice that there's a little gap left between all of these things. Like the dimension snap point is still there. But this gap um, is the is to show that the dimension line isn't part of the object it's dimensioning. Um, and in AutoCAD, um, you can change the the tolerance of of uh, oh sorry the precision of these um, values. So you might go to um, four or five or six significant figures, or you could drop the precision down, have less significant figures. But I'll come to that at the end. Um, so this uh, panel is just practicing dim linear, basically. So we're um, saying, you know, we can we can copy the dimension pattern that's up there. Just get a bit of practice by using it a few times. What's um, what's a good thing to do? At least I find when um, inputting dimensions is you can use the object snap tracking to. I want to track from this corner a distance out, um, and this way I'll, I want all my dimension spacings to be say, let's say three units off the the starting line. Um, and then if I've got um, you know a nested um, a nested dimension line like this, six won't quite be enough. I might say go to seven. Then the next one will be four more than that. So I can put this one out here. So four more than seven is going to be eleven. And you can see now they they look really nice and neat. They're spaced out um, very evenly. So again, I can trace up three. I'm just using um, yeah, repeating commands by hitting spacebar and not typing anything. Dragging from this corner. Now, in this case, because the dimension is um, is top uh, is sort of orientated the other way. If I was dragging it this way, I could say three. But if I go this way, if I extend it out three units, that, that's going to be over that line there. So instead, what I'll do is I'll drag out to four or something else. Again, just so it looks neat. I probably could have started this one at 4 and then gone to 8 and 12, um, but I didn't realize it wasn't quite going to fit. Um, you'll tend to find that if you do that sort of thing, though, even if it's not perfect, it will look better than um, than not making any attempt at all. Again, that one should be 4. Um, of course, if you just want to get some rough practice, you don't have to measure all of these out. You can sort of just click where you want them to be. Um, but it doesn't look as, as professional, I don't think. Anyway, I'll leave those there. Um, the next command is dim align. So that's uh, able to measure between two points, not along the x, y axis. The command is dim alley. And it allows, to get a, it allows you to get a true length between two places. So um, you can see this length doesn't change as I drag between. This is the, the uh, I suppose, um, Pythagorean length. The the true length, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, and you can edit these points afterwards, but you'll notice that the um, the line, the dimension line itself is always parallel with the line that goes between the two points um, that we're interested in. Anyway, um, so we can have some a bit of practice, dim alley, a bit of practice with dim aligned. Again, making sure that we're coming off a consistent number of units. Although, can I trace off that way like that? Yeah, it doesn't look as good. So it's a bit harder to get an exact number of units off off this. I just have to click with dim alley. Um, what do we have next? Dim radius. So dim radius is dim rad for short, um, and we're able to. Uh, come in like this, just click on a circle, any circular feature, and we'll come out. Um, you may notice we've got um, no lander, like I've got a little landing on on this dimension, it comes out flat, 
or on this dimension up here it doesn't um, and I think there's a note here that says C panel 8 if you have that issue because it's um, it's just this this variable dim to we'll come to that in, in a few more panels but for now I'll just show you that if it, if it does look odd you can turn dim to to um, off and then it won't do that so now when I make a dimension it'll come out flat like so and we'll just put a few of these in here put one inside and one there any circular feature can be dimensioned like that um, if you want to have a, a full diameter dimension then the command is simply dim dia and it works the same as dim radius just click the circle and you've got your um, options to track out a dimension somewhere like so okay dim angular is another command so when we've got angular dimensions it's simply dim ang um, and you can put the dimension sort of any anywhere that you might think um, if it makes more sense to put the angular dimension out here then put it there or you can uh, dimension the extension of the lines um, this gives you a few options with the way that you're representing um, an angular piece of information also an arc can be dimensioned with dim angular so you can show how many degrees that arc goes through um, yeah number of ways that you can use that command um, I think I mentioned um, in a previous tutorial that by default these are, are set to um, an angular precision of integer degrees they're not going into you know, 0, 0.00 sort of degrees um, but again that can be changed and we'll show how to in, in the end of this document um, dim to okay so that was the command I spoke of earlier so if I say um, dim dia I'll put a, a dim diameter on here then I'll turn dim to on this is just that little landing I was talking about so same command dim dia except now it comes out with a little landing so you just sort of choose depending on which one you want sometimes it's better to have no landing like this and sometimes it's nicer to have a little landing um, but the option is yours that command again is dim to don't know what dim to stands for by the way um, okay and I made a little mention um, in this last panel about the dimension stylings so you can use the command D just D on its own to bring up dim style and this lets you um, change the way that the dimensions work so just to give you an example I'll go back over here okay so um, if we head over to this area again I can open up dim style with the command D and um, these uh, lines okay, if I check the properties of what these are drawn on we can see they're all drawn on ISO 25 um, so if I go onto ISO 25 and hit modify I can change parts of this um, dimension style so the first thing I'm going to do is change fit um, just to show you how what it is that fit changes so the overall scale in here if I change the overall scale of my dimensions to say 0.3 or something like that can see there's the dimensions as they are and if I hit close on this it applies the scale changes so these have all shrunk in the arrowheads shrunk in the extension shrunk in the offset but the text has stayed the same size the reason the text has stayed the same size in this case is because text was set to standard if you change text to annotative that allows the text to be scaled with fit just as everything else would be so now the, the text shrinks down to that smaller size as well. So obviously if you've got a small drawing, you're going to need a small dimension scale. If you've got a large drawing, you'll need a large dimension scale. Um, if I had, for example, drawn... Um, so let's say I'd drawn this in millimeter scale, but I wanted my final... Um, I wanted my final finished dimension drawing to show up in a meter scale. I'll bump this scale factor back up. I could go to primary units and I could say I want this to read meters but it's going to be a thousand times too small. So I can go in this in this box scale factor if I put 0 0.001 that's the ratio of or how many um, meters there are in one millimeter. So when I type that out hit OK and close I've now got zero meters. Doesn't quite seem right either. 
The last thing that I can change, or not the last thing, the last thing I will change in this video is the precision. So now I might want to read to three uh, points beyond the decimal place. And when I do that, I can read this as 0 0.041 meters. I'm able to get that sort of reading off there. So I started with millimeters and I was able to make these changes. Um, so there are lots of other things that you can change in DIM style. Um, you can create multiple um, different types of dimension um, for you to run with in your drawing. So you might have one that's a very small scale, one that's a bit larger, one in millimeters or in meters or kilometers or whatever. Um, and it's usually good to have dimensions on their own layer as well. Okay, I won't uh, take up any more of your time. The best thing to do is to jump in and have a go at it. Um, and as always, uh, give me feedback if you have any trouble. Thanks for watching.